really yeah. fashionable to be a punk in London. Yeah. Oh, you know. I think a lot of the time, the London, London followed what was happening in London. We looked, you know, we weren't classic punks. We were, yeah. we'd mullet haircuts. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, we used to make everything. I mean, our posters, we, we, we still screen in people's cellars and we move it around people's cellars and everything was held up with pegs to dry. And, and I remember... Jeff Cloud's still doing that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But there, weren't, there wasn't like a music industry. It weren't like, oh, if you're in no. Leeds, you get signed. Yeah. So did you feel yeah. like you could be yourself a bit more because there wasn't such focus? You didn't... You, we never went looking for it. We were exactly the same as you. We didn't think, oh, well, we'll go and talk to a record label in Manchester or London. In our own dis distribution, probably the same as you, and we distributed through um, Red Rhino until it went bust. There was, you stayed here and you didn't have dreams. I'm not saying a movie station because you wanted to, to, you wanted to be in a band and do things, but you just, your aim weren't to get signed by Virgin. <laughs> no, no, we signed with EMI in the end. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Same disaster. Yeah. Just Sarah, so Sarah, from your yeah. point of view, though, you can now do things that uh, Alice and Kevin couldn't do. Such as Well, for instance, you can record things in the middle of the yeah. Yeah. You can distribute things, you can use new media. Is that a big difference? We can definitely take my Fostex 8 track and like, record the drums and like, lay, lay, lay a track up in a day and stuff. Cheaply, like it was 150 quid or something, 200 quid to do that. But then, I don't know, that comes into like. Well, it's just that because I can be in the far north of Scotland and I can get a copy of your EP by pressing some buttons rather than having to wait until I go 50 miles to Inverness and hope the bastards have got the second mm -hmm. single. Well, it, it's, it's totally different now, though, isn't it? You know, That's people have got Cubase, so many they, they can record a whole. Orchestra in their bedroom through Cubase or whatever. Yeah, you know, yeah, you never had that. Orchestra, you know. You're lucky if you, you had sound on sound. You know, on, on your tape. We had very little um, information. Very little. It was hard to find out what was going on. Um, it was hard. Although the scene was intense um, and some news would travel quickly, it was still travelling by landline phone and a couple of music Post. magazines. Oh, yeah. Post. I worked at each other paper and I used to sit over the boxes at the top of our stairs and somebody from the chumbers would come every now and then to pick up their post. <laughs> and I recently found out the reason we came to pick up the post is because people would have sent them a pound for a set. I love the purity of that though. I love the purity of it. Like we do a zine on the twist, I help run a label called on the twist. We do a zine. Like, and the fact that you, it's just, it's so innate, you know, you have, you're not searching the internet all the time for what everyone else is doing. And just because we can get our music up to you in Scotland on the internet doesn't mean people are buying it up there. Because there's so much. Well, if you don't want me, Brass. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> Please, like, we rely on. Now, what we was really thinking about was that where people do go looking for something, it's much more immediate. And it works the other way because uh, using social media in whatever form, people can find stuff and share stuff in a way that you would have to use the post. That lack of information that we had, though, I, I don't envy you for having the, the information you I... had. Because we had a lot of, a lot of freedom because we didn't necessarily yeah. know yeah. that there was a, a, a band just like us in Norwich. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. We acted in ignorance, which well, you haven't got that. Small world can be a and, and albums, yeah. and albums, and information, and things were like sacred objects. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. they cost money that you hardly had. Mm -hmm. So you get an album, yeah. and you treasure it in a way that I don't treasure albums now. I probably should. I know people still do. I can see record collectors in audience that still buy records and treasure them, but also you got your information, musical information from New Musical Express. Every, once a week. Once a week. So, it's free though. Yeah, which is now, but there was that lack of information also meant you created your own thing, so you created fanzines because they didn't exist in other places. And I think to a certain extent it made you more creative because you had to create your the world you wanted. You know what I mean? The musical world you wanted, right? Yeah. That's the right show coming out right there.
Is it? Yeah, definitely. I'm very poetic. <laughs> your outfits are like you. I don't want to. I'm careful of romanticizing that time to myself too much. I wish I was better there back then. So that's where a lot of No, but, but you, you, you say you don't romanticize it. I, I wouldn't say it was a romantic time, but it was a memorable time. You know, as I say, for all the reasons you mentioned, you know, the, the, the cloud hanging over, the little bits, but also the excitement, there was excitement. And there was a little bit of danger, and it was that little bit of danger that sort of made going out in the evening a, a bit more, more <coughs> rather than, you know, going and sitting in the arena with some popcorn and, you know, 100 yards away from the band. It was like you were there, you know, you were right there. The, the, the danger did get a bit tiresome though, in fact we stopped touring because we got sick of being beaten up and being glassed over the head and having um, fire extinguishers smashed across our faces. So it, 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 it was edgy, but actually it, in the end we stopped touring because of that. Yeah. Well, we, well, the, that the was people, really people stopped said, touring said, because... That's it. People stopped touring because John Lennon was threatened a few times with being yeah. shot. You know, so it was still got shot in the end. Yeah. You know, it was a double-edged sword. I think, I think we got off stage a couple of times and had fights mm. and then got back on and carried on playing. Yeah. <laughs> and didn't really mess with us after that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how long it's been. It's not a great thing really, is it? You, get, you go off, you have the fight and then you get back on. But it makes yeah. it memorable, I guess, that, like, that yeah. being less safe. Yeah. Um, I don't know how long we've been going for, but I was going to... Yeah. Sorry, so no, no, no. I was going to throw it out if there's any questions. Because this, you know, we're not the only people who have anything interesting to say or ask me to mm -hmm. And I think one thing that you just slightly touched on, Kevin, was the <coughs> thing about the art college. Because although maybe there wasn't this reputation for a, a music scene, Leeds Poly was, you know, seen as the most cutting edge art school in, in Europe. It was in the Sunday Telegraph and people performance art was a whole you know, radical thing you know, through Jeff Nuttall and people, Robin Page and people like that. So there, it was a hotbed of kind of radical art at the time and the, the university was sort of, you know, like John said, like Marxist feminist. So, so I think you know, that, that, and that did lead to part of that acceptance of punk and that scene. I think, um, Tom is still here, Tom Steele, but he's done a, a lot of work on um, the the radical milieu of Leeds um, and how that extended a long time back. Yeah. Um, and the, I, was, I was thinking about that when I was saying when I came here, I didn't know I was breathing in the air of a quite radical city. And there were so many different strands of it. I have no idea whether it's like that now. Or, well, it, it kind of still is because you know, it, it goes on down, doesn't it? But um, we had so many things uh, as well as being a horrible place, it was a brilliant place. Um, and if you think where we're sitting now, what happened just outside here in the 1880s, it, it, it just points exactly what you're saying. <coughs> the, 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 the gas strike and the, uh, the mill workers and the big cooperative mill that was opposite here. Mm. What, and Temple Marshall, Works? Um, uh, Marshall's, Marshall, Marshall's Mill, the mill owner, when... Um, yeah. When his workers got the vote, he took them all out into the yard and said, anyone who doesn't vote for me is sacked. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's proper democracy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> when, when you walk through Park Square, thinking of Leeds large strike, where some white people were... The dripping riots. The dripping riots. The lard. She's put in prison and then there was a riot in Leeds and she was released. <laughs> Yeah, this is the crowd that go out there. Yeah. Smuggle their optic black holes somewhere. That's right. So they all kicked off in Park Square. Yeah. He's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Football balls for them. <laughs> <laughs> Any more stories? Just, you know, <laughs> my own. Just, just, just see it. It's the same thing. Kevin and Barbara. People talk about the night. Any other related things? It's in 70. Kevin, you're right. Kevin, let's get the year right. 76, 74. What are you talking about? When did you arrive? 74. 74. And prior to 74, there was a lot of music in the world. Some of it was things that happened in the town hall, in the poly, at the university, you could go to the road stones or whatever. But there was also things, and someone touched on the free school. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that regularly happened at Leeds Poly was a benefit for the free school 
and the band that played were people who were involved in the free school. And there was that sort of like undercurrent that saw people who were involved in radical music even then when the best thing you could do on the Thursday night was go to Leeds Town Hall and watch the, the sun go down through the windows while yes played. Yeah. And, but there were people who were playing, and there were other people who were doing things which were slightly eccentric, like Bill Nelson played at a pub called The Sportsman on Stony Rock, and his light show was uh, uh, car headlights. <laughs> you know, there was a whole series of strange things happening which were all A, unrelated to any art school, and B, particularly related to the fact that these people need to do things which were radical. So I don't think that it was just like suddenly in 74 it all started. I think it's always been there. I think, I think you're right because, I mean, uh, my, my, I, I was never part of the art school thing. I was somebody born in Bendy Place. I was just part, part of Lee's. So that was something else that was there. It wasn't, yeah. it wasn't the centre of the scene. It was another part of it. Yeah. Well, the, the city uh, was far more eccentric, 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 just like it is now. The early 70s, the, the happening venues weren't in the city centre, they were outside the centre. Uh, the Ford Green was Ford Green. Ford Green. Stage and that was in Hales. Yeah, the Ford Green, Bebop Deluxe used to play there yeah. regularly. A uh, band called Kindness, it became Smokey. Son of a Bitch, it became Saxon. And so that was like a breeding ground for the pre punk <laughs> days. And the Sex Pistols even played yeah. there, the Ford Green, uh, before anybody had ever heard Flying of it. Flying Groovies. Yeah, there's just loads of great bands, Simple Minds played there, there loads. I, I think yeah. was and that, so, was, that was the same for any city. But what, what, what I'm leading to is that the, the ve venues were outside the centre. You had the Haddon Hall, you had the Barcelona. But yeah. the Barcelona. most popular one that people That's from Leeds used to go to was Batley Variety Club. Yeah. Yeah. You know, which is miles out. Yeah. And now, a people, working men's people won't sports. even venture outside the university, you know, parking steps to the mothership. They won't, they won't go more than two miles out, outside of it. Can you, know, you imagine people going to Oakley to see Hendrix? Yeah. That's <laughs> what so they did, yeah. Well, they were mainly Leeds, they were Leeds yeah. people on the whole. It was a Leeds band, the Outer Limits supported them. Yeah. yeah. I was just going to ask, like, with, with all the energy that was around, you know, the late 70s, early 80s in Leeds, how come? Leeds didn't develop a recognised music scene like Manchester or Liverpool. He did. Yeah, it did. Like, he did. <laughs> no, the media didn't. Yorkshire tell me. Well, that's what I mean. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't presented and picked up that way. It wasn't put uh, uh, in, in, in Manchester and, and Liverpool. Like, they had. Yeah. Manchester had a record label, but Manchester had a factory and Liverpool had a Yeah. No, but in Manchester. Oh, in, in, in Manchester <laughs> and Liverpool, they had Granada Television. And they had people like Tony yeah, Wilson and Tony Wilson. Well, yeah. actually, it was Tony Wilson and he managed to plug them like hell on Granada. And the Beatles made it through. The first time I saw the Beatles was on Granada TV. The, uh, the media used to come up. But you well, used to tell me. No, but they used to mock. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So all, all the golf yeah. fans, all the media, yeah, you totally yeah. mocked yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. The first yeah. proper, after the punk scene, the first proper. Lee's music scene was golf. It yeah. was yeah. and that was yeah. laughed at yeah. everywhere. And yet there's brilliant musicians, brilliant bands. And it's still going. Yeah. And, and we were we were like hated we were yeah. you know I mean we I mean we were despised and yeah. the reviews were hilarious, you know, they make spinal tap reviews look something like <laughs> classically flattering. So what is that the southern music press? No, I mean I think no, it's not well, it all was by that point. music press as well as London essentially. There's a three part they got independent, the guys did independent music on BBC4 not so long back with Mark Ackley. Did you see it? Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. Manchester, <laughs> London, Glasgow, Leeds never mentioned, Sheffield mentioned once at Cabaret Hotel. And that's true. I've got it, I've got it. What's all this about? I mean, the, the, the other thing is we didn't have an infrastructure. I mean, we had John. Yeah. We had, we had, had, we had, and, and Rhino became yeah. the Leeds de facto layoff. But it was always slightly yeah. one removed. Yeah. 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 There was nothing, I mean, it's brilliant. That, you know, you're yeah. sitting in the centre of an empire of independent activities in a way that just wasn't there then. We just had to become our own record label, so I, and we weren't good at it, that's the other thing. We were really good at being a band, we were the worst businessman ever. So you set up a record label and you crap at it, and it's the thing you don't want to do. So um, you can be really good at playing gigs. And you'd be good at making records, 
But if you don't want that to be your life, running a record label, you're slightly screwed. And we didn't want to go to the big labels for a long time. But me comes too, they were like an ethos of, well, we're bloody minded, we just want to do it our way. We don't want to go to you, we don't want to, you know, your measure of success is not our measure of success. I think we have got on, say, move back, move forward 25 years, and you have the opportunity to do things for yourself now that you can I think we'd still be terrible businessmen. You <laughs> can't change your intrinsic nature. We're rubbish at it. But there's a, I mean, the other ethos, but the only the other ethos, well done, which like celebrated the fact that we weren't doing that. Mm. And that's what I really liked about our film. We weren't going to break in or get signed by labels or got sacked the next day or whatever it was. It wasn't that clear. Yeah, that 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 I mean, the Mikons have been signed. Mikons have been signed twice to major labels, and each time it was an absolute disaster. Oh, it's so it wasn't John the John Lambert said something. Yeah, about it in, in I mean, we tried to suffer that cup, but it kept us in our lips. Yeah, but actually, we celebrated that we should work in a program on BBC Four about that. The other indie music scene. You know what I mean? Liz was not even mentioning three programs. It's always over. It's outrageous. Always over. Yeah, yeah. Manchester. Oh, yeah. 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 Do you think there's something in that, like, that sort of reserve that we have here where we don't particularly want to kind of celebrate our own achievements and shout about them in the way that, you know, Man Manchester had Tony Wilson, who was a fantastic marketeer for Manchester. Um, we just never really had Tony Wilson. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, I've always found. I wish you liked it. <laughs> I've always found when, when Manchester and Liverpool bands are at the club, which had put a lot, you know, Echo and the Bunnymen, Tear Exposed, they always brought a couple of coaches with them, and then they'd be playing and nobody had heard of them. But they'd have like 20, 30 people at the front going mad. And in the old days, in the music old days, they used to call it a clack, and, and people used to be employed to laugh and clap at a new artist. And it, it's a kind of psychology like the local. Yorkshire kids sort of say, oh, everybody's clapping, and they, they must be good, and they started to follow them. But the thing is, when Leeds bands went out of Leeds, they, nobody went with them, so they played to nobody. So the, the Leeds fans wouldn't follow them. And I've always found, like, over the years, that the Leeds temperament, they would rather pull somebody down than help them up. A lot of the time they were like, oh, yeah, they're, they're doing kinds of, oh, they're doing well, but they're a bit crap, aren't they, really? You know, I mean, I, it's kind I of like. I didn't find you that. Know, I find yeah. that people were quite supportive of us from Leeds. I mean, really. Yeah, I, I think I, in, because of the, uh, of the scene you were in. Yeah, you know, no, yeah. but not just that, yeah. either. But I think the general the, scene yeah. and the other bands, uh, you know, I'm, because I'm dealing with all the bands, I'd find that the band started making it, uh, the other bands are oh, way better. No, yeah, but no even way, though we would, came from an anarcho punk and then suddenly think we were on top of pot, people trusted us and they were still nice to us and they didn't say, you know, fall down a hole, which is what, you know, that the general response of our people political. It's because you can't be signed to me now, but Leeds was really... Yeah, what you were. But Leeds which was Which is how Jerry Lee Corbyn's got it, because <coughs> they can see that he's not trying to be arch or anything, he's just saying what he believes. and. and you don't get many politicians like that, you know. But Chumba were the same. You know, you said what you believe, and it hit a nerve with a lot of people. But you, you were like unique in that, that respect. I'm just talking about the general pop indie scene around Leeds, and I don't think you know the people in Leeds are generally helpful to uh, uh, a lot of the bands. I think you know, and I try to encourage them to get behind and push and push them up because if they get through, you'll get through as well. But, uh, you know, the impression I got, and just speaking, dealing with bands on a day-to-day -day basis, is that a lot of, if a band started to make a lot of the other bands were resentful of them making it. And then, you know, it's putting a bit of a down on it. And I know, it, I'm talking about it in a general sense, I know that some people are glad to see people taking off. I, for one, am glad to see people taking off from me. Whatever, but I know there was that kind of attitude. Well, it didn't last long, so it's yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think the bands in Leeds, all the bands that I knew in the punk scene and then thereafter in the goth scene, were all, um, even though they had very different personalities and didn't necessarily agree about music or about politics or whatever, they all looked out for each other. Yeah. And I mean, you'd say the same when you're great. Yeah, yeah. 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 Remember, we all sat in the baggage and glowered at each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The different parts of the building. Yeah. We liked us there, you liked us there. Yeah. 
But it was, we would always stand for each other. It was competitive, but that we also looked after yeah, yeah, each other, yeah. didn't we? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then during my strike, everybody just got on with it and became friends and played with each other at our wedding many benefits. Yeah. And at that point, I think Leeds were like a unified culture. Mm. Maybe we're on it, because you were in Andy Forbes. Yeah. But you were, he were in our minor support group years. Mm. Yeah. You know, people carried on. No, yeah, I do. I do. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, unless it's yeah, one person. It's for all of you, really. Um, what bands have you seen recently that you think have got promise? Or, or if, if, if not that, what have you, any bands that you've seen in the Leeds area or surrounding areas that have made something success recently that you found interesting? Well, if I can speak, I think Esper Scout have got a, a lot of interest and promise about them, and it's not only in what you're doing musically, but it's also the way that you're doing it. And, and to me, it feels like a kindred spirit. It feels like that same DIY ethos, that saying, well, we'll just get on with it. If it's not happening, we'll make it happen. And that's one of the reasons I was so pleased you agreed to be here today, because it does feel like a very long arc <laughs> over time. And, and, and in between, um, from the late 80s up until maybe the last five years, a very different world. And now it somehow seems it's becoming a world I understand again. And it's bands like yours that seem to be doing that. Um, so I'm very optimistic about the scene in Leeds at the moment in a way that I haven't been for decades. I don't know if it might be history repeating though, because I think a lot of us sort of maybe embrace or just accept that underdog spirit because Leeds doesn't get it. It did get a, like a double page Yorkshire at least got the only double page spread in the enemy last year, maybe when it was doing its regions um, coverage. Um, so it's like, oh yeah, like hookworms, and I, don't, I can't remember who else was mentioned. Um, but there are, but I don't know how many bands in Leeds aspire to, or at least accept that, that they that's, may have that's that. another thing you've touched on in, those days, ceiling, uh, in the punk days we at least we used to, there was sam's melody to make an enemy we used to have local correspondents like dave simpson like, yeah, yeah, tonight yeah. he's one of them uh des moines or it was nice to burn but he had several uh pseudonyms including his girlfriend's name uh and there were quite a few writers northern writers who used to yeah. review the gigs and write about them there's not many now review gigs in so all, all the gigs, they wait till the band goes to London and review them down there. Because um, there's no money, enemy, nobody was buying it, so it's free, you know, full of adverts. Um, and there's not, the other music came has gone by the by a few years ago. Uh, so that was another thing that was different about the scene then. People used to believe the enemy, and there were some very good writers for the for the There was a period of time, the enemy, where but it's on, you know, like for years and every week there was a big lead such thing, James Brown. Yeah. Yeah, James Brown for a little bit. Stephen Wells. Yeah. 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 Chris Morgan yeah. for a little bit. Even from Anthony Lake, people that were in. And Dave Simpson for the man of the man. I don't know if it's going to be out of here. I don't know if it's going to be out of here. So there was a point where every week I was getting the NMA and there was a lead, you know, which thing in there. And a lot of their writers have gone on to uh, be well known, you know. Yeah. To, and where did he start? Yeah. 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 You, know, you know on people that uh, blow your socks off? Have you seen Richard Dawson? Yeah. Richard Dawson blew his socks off. Yeah. They ended up somewhere Stunned. in Middlesbrough. Because it's like a singular thing and I think that's what a lot of Leeds bands have. Because they're not fashionable. Not, not where Richard Dawson is one on his own. But Leeds bands would, wouldn't be scared. You know, they, none of us wanted to be, you, you didn't get a cash of Oasis fans after Oasis, you didn't get a cash, you know, it's always had its singular thing. Mm. Yeah, I like off kilter bands, one I've seen recently, I think it's uh, Leeds via Huddersfield, a band called Maya, uh, managed by Chuck Hussain, and they're just totally different, they're out on their own, which is probably why they're not got big yet, but, uh, you know, I like them recently, I like uh, a band called Quack Quack, it was sort of jazzy, great drums, <coughs> But I like them from all different fields. Uh, but uh, to be honest, I've not seen uh, that many. But you know, hookworms, 
you know, they're, they're getting all the press, but I see Pink Floyd, you know, or oh, hear Pink Floyd, but hear Earthworms. And, uh, and uh, somebody of my age, uh, and who's been into obscure music, I can, with most bands coming out, I can see where they rip that bit off, you know, you rip that out from there. So it's kind of not fresh. But less than in Manchester. That's, it. that's another one off the room. That's another thing that Leeds has on Manchester. Um, cheers. And thanks to Tony for putting this on. Yeah, thanks yeah, for that. Thanks and, to like, and thanks to me, Cons. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, yeah. <laughs>